Hello and a warm welcome to our special report. This week on the show, we'll talk to you about the rising Ayurveda industry in the country. This system of traditional medicine is capturing millions of minds, but as far as the quality control, standardization, finance, and branding of the Ayurvedic products is concerned, is India really ready to compete globally? Let's find out all this over the next 30 minutes. हम जो आयुर्वेद क्षेत्र से जुड़े हुए लोग हैं वही सबसे बड़ी चैलेंज है शत प्रतिशत आयुर्वेद को समर्पण ऐसे आयुर्वेद के डॉक्टर मिलना मुश्किल हो गया है उसको खुद को लगता है भाई अब इससे तो कुछ चलने वाली गाड़ी नहीं है अब तो एलोपैथी के रास्ते पर जाना ही पड़ेगा Prime Minister Narendra Modi is flagging just one of the many issues which Indian Ayurveda is facing at the moment. Speaking at the 6th World Ayurveda Congress, Modi wants to popularize this tradition of medicine very much on the lines of yoga. Though India has made an impressive start, but given the historical legacy it claims to the thousands of medicinal plants since ages, it has not been able to globalize nor capitalize to its fullest potential. From the beginning of the world, there is no part of the Sampada of Prakruti Sampada that is not in Ayurveda. मूल से लेकर के फल तक यानी हमारे पूर्वजों ने हर छोटी बात में कितना बारीकाई से उसके गुणों का उसके स्वभाव का उसकी उसका व्यवहार में उपयोग का अध्ययन किया होगा तब जाकर के स्थिति बनी होगी हम उस महान संपदा को आधुनिक स्वरूप में कैसे रखें ये दूसरी चैलेंज में देखता हूं Ayurveda is a centuries old science. There is no or little change in the form of Ayurveda as it is being practiced. Although the principles of Ayurveda are called immortal, but there is surely a need to be contemporary with the current scientific trends. Efforts are being made to update the age-old scientific wisdom in various aspects by focusing on its pharmacologic and therapeutic potential. A large number of scientists are directed towards herbal research, including the development of new active principles beneficial in various disorders. Still, the fundamental principles of Ayurveda are neglected and that is why majority of the herbal researchers are concluded with little in hand. The challenge the initial challenge was coming up with standardized quality Ayurveda products. You know, when we talk about allopathy, we talk about research. And when we talk about Ayurveda, there's a lack of research. What Marshi Ayurveda started is, was with research. Raja Sabha TV finds out the challenges faced by the Indian Ayurveda and can it be realized as a global potential system of treatment much more than what is talked about. The science of Ayurveda, the origins of which lies in God's own country of Kerala, stands in danger of losing its authenticity and with it the hordes of wellness tourists who flock to the state in search of a cure that eludes modern allopathy. The new 
numerous Ayurveda resorts and Kerala government green leaf certified treatment centers will also need to focus their attention on sourcing of the medicinal herbs needed in Ayurveda which are slowly depleting. Kerala Ayurveda is not only really limited to rejuvenative aspect. It has, it has got curative elements and preventive elements as well. This has not developed in a bigger way outside the state. So what we are now trying to do is that that, uh, that aspects are to be explored and promoted in a big way. In India, over 7,500 species of plants are estimated to be used by 4,635 communities for human and veterinary purposes. Besides, 400 odd plant species are used by the phytopharmaceutical industry to manufacture standard medicines. Unfortunately, many of these plants have already been assessed as endangered, vulnerable and threatened due to overexploitation in the wild. A threat assessment exercise of 75 plants of Northern, Northeast and Central India as per the revised World Conservation Union Red List criteria shows that there are 35 critically endangered species, 16 endangered, 15 vulnerable, 7 low risk near threatened and 2 data deficient. Raw medicinal plant input as a large particular and a growing problem that's there. Uh, whilst the National Medicine Plant Board, State Agriculture Universities, they're doing their bit in, in trying to overcome uh, the, the supply of raw materials from cultivation sources. I feel uh, the kind of quantum target uh, in tonnage mission mode approach is really lacking. Promoting the cultivation of medicinal plants and their use by the population can help preserve the unique knowledge which each region of the country has about them. Manufacture of medicines at the local level and their due certification can help remove the fears about the Ayurveda medicines. The National Medicinal Plants Board set up in the year 2000 through a government resolution is entrusted with the task of coordinating all matters related to medicinal plants including drawing up policies, strategies for conservation, proper harvesting, cost-effective cultivation, research development, processing, marketing of raw material in order to promote and develop this sector. With a view to give impetus to the activities and development of medicinal plant sector in the country, the board formulated schemes for financial assistance and guidelines for implementing the projects. The schemes and projects are grouped under promotional and commercial schemes. But to revitalize and fulfill the demands of the Ayurveda sector, there's still a long way to go. The shrinking forest cover, the main source of medicinal plants, affects its supply. The only way out is to go in for mass cultivation of medicinal plants to meet the increasing demand. The problem is we don't get proper herbs in this country. The growing of herbs should be taken up by government on a large scale because most of the herbs are not available or maybe, I mean, they are no more in the forest even because and the, but there are very few people who are able to get these herbs. The Ayurveda industry in India is going through a credibility crisis. For example, if an exporter wishes to take his product to the developed world, the first set of questions faced by him, by the respective regulatory agencies is, what is the proof that the product contains all that is claimed on the label? And how does the product actually work? That is what you call the standardization and the quality control. And this is exactly where India lies. The non-availability of a large number of medicinal plants is indirectly affecting the quality of the herbal products. The shortage of medicinal plants has induced collectors to use adulterants. Moreover, in many cases, the collectors, who are employed as casual labourers, have very little idea of the medicinal plants. They not only devastate the ecology, but also do a lot of mixing unconsciously because of their lack of knowledge about medicinal plants. Taking into account the kind of maligned uh, campaigns that we sometimes face, that Ayurvedic products you know, contain metals or contain minerals that are not really safe. These things need to be addressed threadbare. These things need to be addressed in the correct profiling because we have companies that are manufacturing tons 
of, of such kind of products and have a safety record that exceeds 140 years. We've done chronic, we've done acute toxicity studies, we've done genotoxicity studies and still with all the paradigms that modern science would want safety profile, it's all very clear. Due to unavailability of some plants in Kerala, many times the plants are obtained from states like Tamil Nadu. During this process, the raw materials can also lose their potency during the time it is transported from one place to another. Lack of proper storage facilities on the route along with lack of knowledge of preservation techniques does no good to the final product. But not many manufacturers, especially big firms that use medicinal plants in their concoctions are bothered about the quality of the raw materials. We are curing the disease, not only curing the diseases, it's the completely root cause. What are the root causes? So we want to cure through the root cause. So we need the drugs for that. We quality to medicines. If we want to export good उसमें इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड की मेडिसिन बनानी पड़ेगी लेकिन हमको जब भारतीय औषधियों को विदेश में लेकर जाना है तो हमको विदेशों में विश्व में भी हमको औषधि के रूप में ले जाना चाहिए ये जो सिर्फ हर्बल सप्लीमेंट जाते हैं उसको भी हमको देखना चाहिए कि हमारी औषधि फिनिश प्रोडक्ट में जाए ना कि सिर्फ रॉ प्रोडक्ट में the case of the best known Ayurvedic concoction which is widely favoured for enhancing the human body's immunity system. It comprises 70 ingredients but 85% of it is Amla. But according to the records available with the government, India is not producing enough Amla needed to prepare the amount of Chavan Prash available in the market. Shortage of medicinal plants is further aggravated by the export of raw materials. Because of quality controls, buyers from developed countries do not accept finished products from India. Hence the only alternative is to sell raw materials. Once again short-term profit motives destroy the long-term benefits. There's a huge market already right now. Uh, only in the Philippines, it's just starting. So we want to introduce it to in our country. We want to ex export it in Iraq and to be registered and to do our jobs. Uh, well, the Yani is so interested here. The the status is very good, but still there's huge potential all over the world. I think, especially Germany, but also especially the United States. There's huge potential, and I would like to encourage all. all Ayurvedic doctors from India, you know, to expand globally and go into these countries to promote Ayurveda. Let's take a short break at this point in time and return with plenty more on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching our special report on the Ayurveda industry in India. Apart from shortage of medicinal plants, there are several other factors aiding the Indian Ayurveda. One of the major drawbacks in ensuring the genuineness of the raw drug is the controversy over the botanical identity of a large number of raw drugs. Even the publication of Ayurveda Pharmascopia by the government has not helped solve the problem. Ayurvedic researches undertaken during the last 50 years have not been very rewarding. However, real laboratory-based new research is still awaited. The challenge with Ayurveda facing is the, the, the real research in Ayurveda. That is what is, is lacking in the Ayurveda sector. Because this cannot be taken by the private agencies or individuals. This should be taken by the government of India. India should start a chain of research organization in the entire India and they should go deep into the classical text and bring out the, the evidence-based systems so that it will be accepted by the entire world. The rules and regulations of patenting of traditional knowledge and biological material are affecting the research activities in the field of Ayurvedic medicines. 
The Faculty of Ayurveda in most central universities is witnessing the shortage of research scholars who are enthusiastic to conduct research activities because of the patent norms and regulations. The Indian patent law allows patenting only when the innovation meets the standards of novelty, new invention and industrial applicability. It restricts the patenting of innovation in traditional knowledge including Ayurveda and other traditional medicines. If you talk of the industry, we still have to go a long way ahead in terms of business I am talking. But if you talk in terms of knowledge, of course India stands on the top of the world. The Ayurvedic knowledge is uh, such a deep knowledge about human system and it is now you know, liked by the whole world. So knowledge wise we are definitely on top, we can call we are Vishwa Guru, but we need to do a lot of work in order to you know, do more research on the products and make our products the best quality so we can export it to the whole world. Any new research in the field of Ayurveda is not considered a new research as it is considered as traditional knowledge. This is the key to real problem in Ayurveda. Researchers in foreign countries get patent, for example, turmeric heals wounds and this is a medicinal use of the herb and the plant. On the other hand, this knowledge was known to India for thousands of years. India objected this trend and since there were no digitalized records of this knowledge, a traditional knowledge digital library that is TKDL was launched which is a collaborative project between Council of Scientific Industrial Research, Ministry of Science, Technology and Department of Ayush. It involves documentation of literature related to Ayurveda and other traditional medicines. So far it includes about 2.12 lakh medicinal formulations. Although TKDL is protecting the interests at the international level, but a clause is necessary to boost research activities in Ayurveda. Young researchers have lost interest in research and their focus now is on academics for a career in teaching. Allopath का जो charm है, जो modernization है, उस तरीके से हमारा जो IS department है पिस रहा है. तो government को चाहिए जो हमारी पैती है, जो जिसके हम पितामा हैं. पूरे world को हमारी आवश्यकता है सिर्फ IS में. हम उनको वो दे सकते हैं कि वो हमारा main है. Another reason for the lack of interest is the non-availability of ancient Ayurvedic literature in contemporary language. Most of the scriptures are in Sanskrit, which is not understood by the masses. This has been a major drawback as far as globalizing Ayurveda is concerned. Dr. Joy Verghese of Care Keralam is the first man in the country to make a drug master's file with the help of the National Innovations Council, which carries all classical Ayurvedic formulations. This is an attempt to globalize Ayurveda so that companies can register their products outside India. Dosier is a, is a complete study of a drug and it is the document which we take to international community for registration. So it includes process product validation, safety study, animal efficacy study and all the relevant uh, all the relevant um, in, um, uh, documents which with which you can register a product outside india india requires more than 20000 trained therapists while the mushrooming ayurvedic spas in us germany and west asian countries would require trained hands to the tune of several lakhs but the biggest problem is that there are not sufficiently qualified hands there is a huge gap between the demand and the supply Another challenge for the Indian Ayurveda is a lack of trained therapists. Ayurvedic spas and wellness clinics are attracting many people, but lack of adequate trained manpower is a cause of worry to the industry. Beauty and wellness treatments, weight reduction, stress management and specialized treatments are among those offered at the spas and wellness clinics. However, the Ayurveda industry is facing a shortage of qualified and trained personnel. Ayurveda has never been focused. We adopted, of course, we have inherited a great profound our Indian knowledge system and Ayurveda particularly and then for thousands of years. And, um, and we have never taken it seriously after independence. It is for the first time, that's what we, Vigyan Bharati, that is a, a people science movement, one, the largest people science movement of connectivity, 6,000 scientists. We said that we must bring Indian sciences to the forefront. While in India, the traditional systems have been treated as alternative and complementary systems, a country like China, which also boasts 
of its age-old civilizations like India has not discarded its traditional practices. In fact, they have been given an equal status and have been mainstreamed into the modern medical system. Ayurveda, the traditional Indian medicine that is TIM and traditional Chinese medicine that is TCM, remain the most ancient yet living traditions. Efforts to monitor and regulate herbal drugs and traditional medicine are underway. China has been successful in promoting its therapies with more research and science-based approach. While Ayurveda still needs more extensive scientific research and evidence base. China has, uh, I think, uh, gone far ahead of us. In spite of the fact that we are richer uh, as compared to anybody else in the world in terms of knowledge and our potential. So we are going to uh, ensure that all these uh, issues related to restoration and promotion of standards and to put Ayurveda before the whole world in the right perspective with the scientific bent of mind, with scientific scrutiny. That is also done in the most, uh, I would say, uh, scientific and able fashion. Traditional Chinese medicine uses over 4,000 plant species, while India uses about 7,000. But still in the international market, TCM is well established when compared to the Indian Ayurvedic medicine. The Indian herbal medicines market is worth around 1 billion US dollars worldwide as against the global market for herbal medicines which is in the region of 62 billion US dollars with the Chinese herbal medicine market set to be worth 19 billion US dollars. We have not been able to market Ayurveda in the way it should have been and the biggest damage that has been done to Ayurveda is by the Ayurvedic doctors themselves who study Ayurveda but they never practice Ayurveda so honestly and so dedicatedly as they should. Vishwa mein jaha jaha bhi desh hai, उन देशों में हमारी जो एम्बेसीज हो मिशंस हो वहां पे हमारे आयुष का कोई अटैच ही होना चाहिए वो वहां प्रचार करें वो वहां बताएं कि किस प्रकार हम आयुर्वेद की औषधियों को वहां भेज सकते हैं और वहां जो हमारे इवन भारतीय लोग और विदेशी लोग हैं किस प्रकार वो आयुर्वेद औषधि चाहते हैं जिस प्रकार चाइना ने किया a huge opportunity awaits the ingenious indian pharmaceuticals to be availed through innovation patents and trademarks the prehistoric knowledge of Ayurveda and its applications to cure illnesses effectively has not been explored fully by India, which has been lagging behind and is ranked third in the herbal medicine category, with less than 2% of global market share, while China occupies nearly 30% of the market. Medicine ke rupe mein ko nahi milti hai. Aap jante hai, pharmaceutical industry ki taakat kitni hai? वो आपको आसानी से घुसने नहीं देंगे वे किसी भी हालत में आपको मेडिसिन की ग्लोबल एक्सेप्टेंस वाली सिक्योरिटी नहीं देंगे बड़ी चैलेंज है लेकिन अगर सामान्य मानवी को इसमें विश्वास हो गया तो कितने ही बड़ी ताकतवर संगठन हो आपको रोक नहीं सकते एंड वी वुड लाइक टू इवन हेल्प द कंपनीज इन द पब्लिक सेक्टर टू इंप्रूव देयर स्टैंडर्ड्स अडॉप्ट गुड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रैक्टिसेस so that uh, Ayurveda, which is already uh, in the process of becoming a darling of the whole world, it is accepted by the whole world uh, most gracefully and scientifically. Chinese herbal medicines, which rarely contain 10% scientific base when compared with the Indian Ayurvedic system, are doing better than India by 50 fold. The major reasons are quality control, standardization, scientific methods of production and evaluation are completely missing in India. Indian government not involved in export of Ayurveda, few Indian writers have made an effort to have their books published for American audience. And last but not the least, India needs to move on from stressing only on Panchakarma therapy, which is time taken and open to few wealthy people only. The NDA government this year has approved the National Ayush Mission or the NAM 
to address the gaps in the health services in the vulnerable and the far-flung areas of the country. This mission, which will comprehensively deal with Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Siddha and Yunani, will also provide a sustained availability of the raw materials for the Ayush system of medicine and will also improve the availability of the quality drugs through the increase in the number of pharmacies and the drug laboratories. The new NDA government has decided to globalize and work towards upliftment of Ayurveda in the form of a mission. National Ayush Mission or NAM is all set to improve the Ayush education through enhancement in the number of upgraded educational institutions. But the most important thing is the instituting of the Central Drug Authority for Ayurveda which will keep a tab on quality control and standardization of Ayurvedic and herbal products. Now we have uh, uh, many, uh, something like uh, over 250 medical colleges and then uh, over 100 medical colleges providing postgraduate education. We certainly want to strengthen all this in terms of uh, uh, quality of medical education and also uh, want to come up with a, a whole lot of new institutes. Not only this, but the Modi government has now set up a separate ministry to promote alternative therapies such as yoga and traditional Ayurveda medicine in the form of Ayush ministry. Prime Minister has repeatedly called for greater use of India's health remedies and exercises, part of a push to promote traditional learning. Ayurveda is a way of life practiced over centuries which has contributed to the health and well-being of the people. Medicines in Ayurveda are nature-based and can be considered as food. Therefore, to dismiss Ayurveda on the condition that it is not evidence-based would rather be ridiculous. The need of the hour perhaps is to mainstream the Ayurvedic system of medicine without of course disregarding the conventional systems. That's all we could pack up in this half-hour special. See you next time with another issue. Goodbye and thanks for watching.